okay, let's talk about the JIT. And I feel like there should be this kind of soundtrack uh, when I say that, the JIT. You know, because it sounds a bit ominous, the JIT. What is that for kind of beast? Well, it's it's a feature that's been in PHP for a couple of years now. It stands for just in time compiler, actually the JIT compiler, the just in time compiler. And it's, uh, well, it's an interesting feature because in theory, it should speed up PHP code. Um, the JIT, let's, let's see here. I wrote about it a couple of years ago. So this is past me talking. It stands for just in time. You probably know that PHP is an interpreted language because it's not compiled like C, Java, or Rust. Instead, it is a uh, it is translated rather to machine code at runtime. So JIT is a technique that will compile parts of the code at runtime so that the compiled version can be used instead. Very simple example here, but let's say you have a, a for loop with um, some some kind of mathematical operation and it's performed thousand, maybe 10,000 times, the JIT will be able to detect this code and will generate an optimized version of that for loop body at runtime. Um, you can imagine it's a lot more complex than how I'm describing it right now, but in essence, the JIT, yeah, you can, you can think of it as like a cached version of interpreted code generated at runtime. And in theory, this should make interpreted languages like PHP, like JavaScript, it should make it faster. But you'll soon notice that lots of things like depends, you know, especially with the JIT. Now, I wanted to talk about the JIT today, not because it's a new feature, it's been in PHP for four years now, but I wanted to talk about uh, some of the changes that are coming to the JIT in PHP 8.4. And then I also want to do some new benchmarks together because, you know, that's interesting. Let's see how the JIT actually impacts real life web applications, right? So the first change here is how the JIT is disabled by default. I'm not going to read through the whole RFC in this case because it's it's uh, it's short and <laughs> there is very little to say. The JIT used to be disabled uh, when you added these two lines in your PHP ini file. And actually these were the defaults, right? So it's disabled by default. And um, so the JIT has a, uh, a mode, right? Tracing, there's also function and it affects the way the JIT uh, like interacts with PHP code in several ways, but the tracing mode turns out to be the most performant mode for PHP code that's running in like as a web application, right? Um, but you disabled it by having a buffer size of zero. So the JIT requires some memory to do its thing, its magical operations. And it needs like a buffer to, to store, you know, whatever it needs to know in. And if you make that buffer zero, then there is no room to do anything and then the JIT won't be enabled. So this is kind of a weird configuration for, for the JIT. You know, you have to disable it by actually assigning a empty buffer size to it. And this RFC changes that it will add a disable option here, or maybe it already existed, but it wasn't the default. Now it is. So by default, opcache JIT will be disabled and the buffer size can just have a normal value, um, 64 megabytes in this case. Another possible option, by the way, for the default is 128 megabyte, uh, which is incidentally also the maximum allowed JIT buffer size on the Arch 64 architecture. Anyway, it's 64 megabytes right now, okay? That's basically it. There is a kind of a backwards incompatible change because you could technically enable the JIT by only setting JIT buffer size uh, because by default, the, the mode here would be set to tracing. So if you only added JIT buffer size to your PHP ini file, then the JIT would be enabled. And that's not the case anymore. You will actually need to specify a specific JIT mode uh, instead of like the disabled default value. So that's a backwards incompatible change. Um, 
but like the, the worst thing that can happen is that the JIT is disabled while you expect it to be enabled. So uh, if, you, if you're using the JIT in production projects, you might want to check up on that. And you, you might want to make some changes because otherwise the JIT will be disabled if you haven't specified uh, this line here. But in 99% of cases, you probably will have set this and there won't be any issue because um, you all also have set the, the buffer size to some amount other than zero because, you know, otherwise the JIT would be disabled anyway. So people voted on this and it's all fine. That's the config default changes to the JIT. And then there's also um, this change here. I, I have to say, like, I'm, I'm not a, a very familiar with, like, compiler talk. So, I, yeah, I might struggle a bit here. Um, the first version of the JIT for PHP was released in PHP 8.0. At that time, uh, we took a quite simple approach. We are uh, generating native code directly from Zen VM bytecode. And this approach allowed to deliver JIT in quite a short time. But it also created significant limitations in possible optimizations. Smart optimizations require a more formal and detailed intermediate representation. That's the title of this RFC, by the way. JIT implementation based on IR framework. And that's this intermediate representation. I don't know what that is, but I can assume based on the name that you will compile bytecode to something intermediate do some analysis on that. And from that analysis, you can make more like smarter decisions on, on what to do next and which parts to compile and which parts not to compile. Um, so the introduction of the Arch 64-JIT backend in PHP 8.1 made, <laughs> also this is fun, made the maintenance of JIT a bit more complex because we now often have to update assembler code in two backends. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, the JIT, it's, it's, it's not like your average code, right? This is, this is assembly in, in big parts, as far as I've understood. There are only one or two people who actually understand the JIT who are working on PHP. Now, luckily, Dimitri is, a, is paid. He's one of the paid developers for PHP. Uh, he's not paid by the foundation, but by, I think, Send. I'm not sure, actually. Um, so this is his full-time job. But the JIT is, is like, there's there's still a pretty big bus factor here. And if you don't know the bus factor, it was coined when the foundation was, uh, was created. There are two little people uh, with enough knowledge to to like carry this project. And the foundation is doing great work now because they are fixing that. But the JIT, as far as I know, is still like this area of PHP, which is kind of a black box for most people, also internal developers. So yeah, that's a, that's a good thing to, to keep in mind. Now, a smarter JIT compiler with some intermediate uh, representation was planned a long time ago. The real work was started in January, 2022. The proposal is the result of these almost two years of work. Wow. So, so that's, that's pretty big. And, and like, congratulations to Dimitri pulling this off. It sounds like a pretty complex topic to me. Um, so I propose a new JIT implementation that is based on a separate, on a separately developed IR framework. I don't know if I'm, <laughs> if I care to look here. Uh, so this is C code, I reckon. Let's just, let's click something open and act like we know what's going on. <laughs> Just moving things around, I guess, and doing a lot of... No, I have no idea. I have no idea. But interesting, interesting. Um, this IR... Uh, oh, instead of separate backends that generate x86 and arch64 code, now we have a single backend that constructs IR. So I don't really know <laughs> how much we'll understand from all of this. Um, I did see that there's uh, now a disable opcache JIT IR uh, to switch to uh, the old implementation. I guess this is a compile flag. Uh, at the current state, the PR doesn't remove the sources, so it is possible to switch back to uh, implementation by configuring PHP. Yeah, this is like a configuration flag when compiling PHP. Uh, JIT is a quite complex subsystem. Its first implementation will likely have bugs, but I'm confident that these can be addressed. Cool. Uh, we have more time to fix potential issues the sooner this proposal passes and the patch is merged. Makes sense. The main goal of a separate IR framework 
development is the collaboration with other compiler experts. Yes, yeah, so Dimitri, he made this IR framework, I think, which is something standalone so that other people can uh, use it as well from other languages. And so that it, you know, uh, can be uh, grow better than uh, <laughs> and faster than if he would just do it all in PHP. So that's nice. So we were talking about the bus factor. There are actually apparently like 14 contributors. Um, there are people contributing to this part and there is some knowledge here. Welding is known from PHP, I know, but I don't know exactly. Oh, Sebastian also contributed. I don't know what that's about. But uh, anyways, I, I think it makes sense, uh, right? And I hope it picks up so that there is a, a bigger uh, bigger audience uh, of developers who, who know how to deal with this because it's quite a black box. Now, the necessary part of the IR framework is embedded into the PHP source code or tree and won't introduce any new external dependencies. The details of the IR framework are complex. This presentation explains design ideas and makes overviews of uh, the most important implementation details. Yeah. I'm not going to uh, understand much of that, I guess. Um, cool. Okay. No backward compatibility breaks to userland code in PHP. So the impact, this is, this is what we'll notice from it, right? The current PHP JIT implements exactly the same set of PHP-related features and optimizations as the old one. Because the IR framework provides more optimizations and has smarter register allocator, uh, the JIT produces a bit faster and smaller code. So 5 to 10% increase. We'll see. Uh, this is feasible with bench and micro bench. The speed of the real life applications is not affected. And this is important with the JIT because these benchmarks, they are um, run on examples that suit a JIT very much like a Mandelbrot um, generator. Let's see here, I, there was this movie somewhere, I think, oh yeah, yeah, here. Um, Zeev made, uh, like, you know, the, the, like generating a fractal stuff and the JIT does very well in that regard, um, but you know, no one's generating fractals in web applications. So I did, I did this uh, benchmarks. Oh, there's, uh, it's over here. I did these benchmarks a while ago on aggregate, just because I had a layer laying around. You know, aggregate. That's uh, uh, this project we've been working on on this YouTube channel as well. It's my RSS feed, basically. Um, it's definitely not like the most representative. Um, application out there written in PHP, but still it's it's running Laravel. So there's quite a lot of PHP code all over the place. So I figured let's test it on aggregate. And when I did this benchmark here, let's see, I'll talk a little bit about the setup. Um, I established a baseline just to be sure. This is the Mandelbrot fractal thingy example. Uh, so you can see, so without the JIT, I was able to do three and a half requests per second and with JIT 41. So that's a huge increase then. So that's where, where the JIT like nested loops, that's where it shines. However, let's scroll here. Oh yeah, yeah. So this these were the results for, for aggregate. So without the JIT, uh, 63 requests with the function JIT, which is one, it's one of the modes, 66 and the tracing JIT, 69. So that's a very, very small increase. Um, let's see here, uh, what's the difference here? Do, 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 let's bump the memory buffer a little bit. So uh, there were some slightly higher, well, actually the, the like the difference was Smaller or the JIT, actually the tracing JIT performed worse with higher memory usage. Probably, I, I, this probably was an, an accurate benchmark, like 500 megabytes. Uh, the RFC mentioned 128 as the max somewhere. So, okay, let's, let's not look into these too much. But you can see like how the JIT didn't really have a huge, it, it did have some impact, right? And there will be applications that have a higher impact from it. And as far as I know, there is not really a cost to enabling the JIT, ex except of course for possible bugs, you know. Um, so 
So yeah, even if it's just a slight improvement, it's still an improvement, no harm done. Um, so let's continue to read here about performance. The compilation speed of the tracing JIT is almost the same. Compilation speed of the function JIT, JIT is up to four times slower. Oh, actually, so we really need to use tracing JIT in our benchmark. This is quite a good result for an optimizing JIT compiler. In my tests, oh, PHP with a new JIT may produce 15 megabytes bytes of native code per second. Okay, interesting, 15, okay. So uh, let's see the impact on Zen VM. On JIT supported systems, the hybrid VM interpreter starts to save and restore all the persistent CPU registers at execute. I have no idea what this is. Okay, compiler talk. JIT is implemented as part of opcache, so the PR changes the build process for opcache. Sure. Any defaults, the PR introduces no does not introduce new PHP any directives or changes any default values. It's at it adds a new IR related JIT debugging capabilities that may be enabled through okay the JIT debug directive and these are them I don't think that's for me anyway mm, let's see future scope this is interesting the usage of IR opens the door for more powerful optimizations some of these are going to be PHP independent like the planned introduction of new loop optimization passes, improvements in load store methods and redundancy, improvements to the code generator. The other part is PHP specific. For example, we can extend CPU register usage for more instructions. Of course, uh, it, it is also possible to support new JIT targets almost independently of PHP. Finally, we may try to completely avoid the manual IR construction in JIT we may introduce a single formal specification for VM instructions in a C-like language, convert it to IR, and then use partial evaluation to generate JIT and VM handler, similar to Truffle. Yeah, no, I have like 95% of things said here. I don't know what it means. Um, but okay, everyone voted yes. So bottom line, there is a new version of the JIT and it should in theory be a little faster in some cases than the previous version and it opens the door for more improvements in the future. So overall, it's a good thing. What I wanted to do is take a look at benchmarks here. So yeah, I have a couple of things prepared here. One for web requests and one for PHP stand to see like if there are any differences uh, for running the JIT in the command line. Now let's start with the like web application first because that's by far the most common use case for PHP to be used, right? So I've got four built-in servers here, and I've got to say up front, built-in servers like the the, the built-in PHP server, right? Uh, it is slow, so definitely don't look at absolute performance. We just want to check whether there are any noticeable differences between enabling the JIT and disabling it. And I suspect there won't be anything really noticeable like with my previous benchmarks, because the JIT doesn't really affect web requests all that much. So um, let's start with PHP 8.3 without the JIT enabled. And uh, let's check here. I use a B, a bash bench to, uh, let's actually uh, check here the benchmarks, which command was I using? So uh, let's do a hundred requests and only do a concurrency of, of one actually, because we're using the built in PHP server here. Let's actually just do 50 requests for now and we'll do a request on, let's check here, this URL. I have a, uh, like a super clear port scheme uh, in place. If the zero here is zero, it means the JIT is not enabled. If it's one, it is. And 8.3 or 8.4, that's the way I remember everything. So uh, we're gonna send 50 requests to this server here. Let's check whether it works. It doesn't. Oh, and that's because I forgot my uh, leading slash here, my tailing slash. Okay, so the requests are coming in and with the power of editing, they are now done. Uh, let's take a look here. We are 
interested in this number here, the requests per second. Let's add that to our to our table here. And as you can see, it is pretty slow, but that's that's totally fine. That's uh, to be expected with PHP's built-in server. So that was that. Let's now do the same test for PHP 8.3 with the JIT enabled. So that's this tab over here. And requests are coming in there. As you can see, not that much of a difference. Slightly higher, but, but barely noticeable. Of course, if you're running like a proper Nginx uh, setup with PHP FPM, multiple processes, uh, the difference will be a, a slightly bigger, but it's it's yeah it's barely noticeable. Uh, let's do the same with PHP 8.4. There's a slightly different arc, uh, command here we're using another binary to PHP. Uh, we have opcache enabled. This is the no JIT version, and over here, uh, remember the RFC that changes how the JIT uh, works is uh, is by doing by setting opcache JIT here to tracing, and there already is a default of 64 megabytes assigned to uh, to memory buffer. So first, the no JIT version. So that means I want the no JIT and PHP 804. What a smart naming scheme, don't you think? Uh, let's go. Okay, that's 4.48. Slightly uh, slightly faster than PHP 8.3, by the way, without any JIT enabled. But again, like take take these numbers with a grain of salt, especially if you want to compare them uh, in an absolute manner. There's no point in doing that. This is uh, the, the built-in PHP server. It's slow, and I'm only interested in seeing whether there is a noticeable difference. So here we have, uh, let's check, JIT enabled, opcache enabled, PHP 8.4. Uh, let's go. There we have it. Slightly worse performance actually compared to the no JIT version. And this is interesting. I observed the same happening during uh, my tryouts because I did these benchmarks a couple of times. I don't know where that's coming from. And it will be interesting to, to learn if it's really because of the JIT or not. These numbers are so small. They are so close to each other that it might not be anything to worry about. I'm not sure about that. It will require a bit more testing. But as you can see, I think there is one thing we can conclude, and it's the same conclusion I came to when I did these benchmarks a while ago when the JIT was just released. Let's scroll here a bit uh, over here. So no JIT was uh, 63 requests per second, and this was with Nginx uh, and, and like PHP FPM with multiple processes. The function JIT, 66. Tracing JIT, 69. That's almost no difference. So that's the difference of in total less than six requests per second with the JIT enabled. So even though we have lower numbers here, I think it's safe to assume that indeed, as like expected with the JIT, there is not a big difference here. I want to do the same with PHP stem um, to see whether uh, it has a, a more pronounced effect on, on applications that actually have quite a lot of loops and things that the JIT should in theory be like more, more targeted towards. So uh, I do a couple of things here. I first clear my PHP stand cache because otherwise uh, the tests wouldn't be uh, very accurate. And then we time the, this command basically. So first we just run PHP stan and that's good. It took 19.61 seconds. So let's add that here. And now do the same, let's do the same with the JIT and let's double check whether I don't have any errors here. So PHP stand, clear result cache, and then we will time with opcache enable CLI because this is a CLI command and opcache needs a different flag to be enabled on CLI. Uh, we pass in the buffer size. This is PHP 8.3, so we still need the buffer size and then we run uh, the command as well. And it is, yeah, virtually the same actually. So I'm not quite sure what that is about. I would expect the JIT to be have to have like a, a slightly more 
pronounced effect in a tool like PHP Stan. Oh, and just to be sure, by the way, let's uh, let's see here. This is the PHP command we're using to run PHP Stan, and we can do dash i and then grab for the JIT. And as you can see, indeed, the doo -doo -doo -doo, the JIT is enabled here. Tracing mode, buffer size. So it is enabled, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything. I don't know how that comes. Also, just to be absolutely sure, this was the command I used to run uh, my servers here. Um, I have PHP info. And uh, if we look for JIT here, not PC, PRCE or whatever it's called. So this is the disabled version. That's correct. If we go to the enabled version, and let's check for, uh, search search for JIT again. Yeah, as you can see, the JIT is on in this version, and the same is true for PHP 8.4. And just showing you to be sure, this is the disabled version, and this is the enabled version, so the JIT is on. Anyway, uh, that's that's interesting. I'm not gonna do the PHP 8.4 ones for PHP stem because they will probably be the same. I'm not sure <laughs> what it is about. Um, like these these results, I'm not surprised by. That's even mentioned in the original JIT RFC. Like for web requests, there is very little gain. It will be interesting to to like see where the difference here comes from because PHP 8.4 with the JIT enabled actually seems to be a bit slower than the JIT disabled. Um, I think it's worth doing some more benchmarks here. Again, don't use these benchmarks to draw any definitive conclusions. I think it's worth doing some more benchmarks, but I think it's also clear that there's no like huge difference here. And uh, yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what the future brings, basically. I've shared a bit of skepticism about the JIT when I first wrote about it four years ago, especially because of like the bus factor. And um, let's see here, the JIT. There, there's only one, yeah, over here, this is, this is where I wrote about it. Uh, there's only one or two person, uh, people who can actually understand how the thing works. And from from what I looked into when the JIT was first added, it's 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 huge, you know. It really is. It's a, a huge, huge pull request, lots of code, and yeah, I think there was some uh, some assembler as well. I don't know. It was a, a huge pull request. And there's only one or two people who actually understand how it works. So unless there is like a clear benefit, I am still not sure like when do we need to use the JIT and when not. And yeah, this, this question isn't really answered at this point. I'm not drawing any conclusions again. Uh, maybe I did something wrong in my benchmarks. If I did, let me know. But uh, I'm going to leave it at that. I, uh, I hope uh, you have some ideas about the JIT as well and you want to share them in the comments. Definitely like share your ideas as well, as well if you have like ideas on how to improve these benchmarks or what else we can do to try it out. Uh, I see very little difference with or without the JIT, both command line and on web. And it will be interesting to see how it will evolve. Still, it's a pretty pretty cool feature. It's an amazing feature. Uh, and let's hope that adding this uh, I, IR framework uh, will, will positively impact the JIT and open doors for the future. So with all of that being said, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like, subscribe, you know what to do, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.